up guys, how's it going? It's Matt here. So uh, this is actually gonna be the uh, part two of my carrying a full-size uh, pistol video. So I was actually surprised that video kind of took off and I'm kind of you know, proud about that. But no, <laughs> the video took off. I got a lot of good comments on it. I got a lot of negative comments too, but most of the comments are pretty good. And I continue to try to answer those comments as it goes on. So I figured, you know what, in this video, I'm gonna address a quick, you know, a few of those questions. And I'm also gonna cover other things when it comes to, uh, you know, carrying a full-size service pistol, the benefits of carrying a full-size service pistol. So let's get, in, get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna address, guys. <laughs> All right, so here it comes, guys. So for the people that specifically, the only comments they make are the ones that you talk with your hands way too much or all right, all right, all right. You know, all you say, all right. This guy said like, all right, a thousand times. Guys, really? Look, I challenge you to go out and make your own personal videos and actually publish them because your YouTube accounts don't actually show any videos whatsoever on it. And I challenge you to put them out there for you to see your little quirks and habits. And I'm telling you what, guys, I'm not changing mine. I am who I am and I'm proud of who I am, guys. So if you don't like me talking with my hands or saying all right a lot, then you don't have to watch a video. So uh, another question that a lot of people have been asking is, uh, well, what about shoulder holsters? Uh, would you recommend shoulder holsters? You know what, shoulder holsters are good holsters, guys. Shoulder holsters are really good and there's specific times that I would actually recommend a shoulder holster, all right? So if you are in a position where you drive a truck for a living or you're basically in a car all the time, um, it's a good idea to use a shoulder rig. It's comfortable, it's gonna be comfortable in the car, and it's a lot easier to reach something in your arm than it is to be digging under your seat belt trying to pull it out. I know you can grab it from your ankle pretty, pretty easily when you're driving, but shoulder works really good, or cross draw is another good one for actually uh, driving a vehicle. And also for the people that say work at a, uh, in a business, all right, so for people that work in a business, as in, uh, you know, cubicle or places where you're not technically supposed to be carrying a firearm according to company policy, but your personal policy says that you'd rather stay alive than follow their policies. I, you, I would definitely recommend it for, for you guys too. If you're going to be wearing a jacket pretty much all day long, was a dress jacket or whatever, shoulder holster is going to work great for you guys. So that's another good reason that you could, another good time to use it. All right. So those are times that I recommend shoulder rigs. I mean, if you want to carry a shoulder rig, year round go for it i mean it's your thing if you like doing that me personally i don't like doing it i had bad experiences with shoulder rigs when i was deployed i just don't like them they're not very comfortable to me but everyone's different all right so that's the other one i wanted to address a couple things i want to talk about about carrying a full-size pistol guys you know i love carrying a full-size pistol i carry a full-size pistol more than i carry anything else now don't get me wrong during the summer months I like carrying either my compact or a subcompact pistol, all right? I, I prefer carrying it depending on what I'm wearing. But the second I get a chance, I always revert back to my full-size pistol, and the rest of the year, I'm carrying a full-size pistol year-round, all right? Now, the reason behind that, guys, is there's truly a lot of benefits for having a full-size pistol, all right? There's a lot of benefits for having a full-size pistol and carrying a full-size pistol daily. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, they're fine with compact or subcompact and that's just fine for them. Great, you know, if that's your thing, go for it, you know. Me personally, I like full-size pistol. And the reason behind that, guys, are one, if you go to a range, you take your pistols to the range and you shoot them all daily. For me personally, when I'm done at the range, if I take a look at the targets, I'm always more consistent with my full-size service pistol than I am with my compact or my subcompact. I'm just a lot more consistent when it comes to that, all right? So a couple other benefits for carrying a full-size pistol is, a lot of people say it all the time, a full-size pistol is a go-to war pistol or a WROL, without rule of law pistol, all right? Now the reasons behind that, guys, are that one, it's a little bit heavier than a compact or a subcompact, so regardless of the caliber, it's going to be a little bit easier to handle the firearm. And if you're like me and you prefer bigger calibers than 9mm most of the time, then you will would rather have a full-size pistol in those calibers. You know, I'm not trying to start a caliber war, guys. If you guys would rather just have your little calibers, keep it to that. But me, I like my bigger calibers, all right? So, and I could go into that, guys, but I'm not going to, all right? So let's move on. So it's great for handling calibers. Even if it's a smaller caliber, it makes it a little bit easier to handle the pistol, all right? Now, when you look at competition shooters, what size pistol do they usually carry, all right? Do they carry a, comp a compact or a subcompact, or do they usually carry a full-size or an extended-size pistol, 
You see what I mean? So the longer the sight radius, the slightly better the grouping is gonna be, the easier it's gonna be able to handle the pistol. So there's a lot more accuracy that can come with a full-size pistol. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people that are perfectly accurate with their compact and their subcompact. I mean, I'm talking barely, you know, barely. There's just a little bit more accuracy when you have that slightly longer sight pitch or sight radius, all right? So some people may argue, I'm just telling you what it is, guys. Better longer sight picture, longer radius, the more accurate it's gonna be, all right? So, and also, on that note, the, the longer the barrel, all right, the, the higher the velocity the round is going to reach. Most defensive ammunition is designed to go to a certain velocity, all right? If you have a full-length pistol, there's a higher chance that that round will perform a lot better than it will in a compact or subcompact barrel because it will have the right velocity, it'll expand better, and there's a lot less chance of it not getting a full exp expansion and actually going through the entire body, all right? So that's another benefit of it. The longer the barrel, the longer the velocity, all right? And also you could add to it, it adds a little bit of extra range. Not a ton, but it does add, add more range to your actual shooting. But that, again, goes to longer sight pitch or sight radius too, all right? So those are a couple benefits of it. Now, another benefit of it, especially when it goes to semi-automatic pistols, all right? Obviously this isn't, isn't going to apply to most revolvers, all right? So the bigger the pistol, the bigger the pistol grip, all right, the more ammunition that pistol can hold, all right? So you're gonna have a couple extra rounds, all right? You know, great, you're gonna have a couple extra rounds. It, it, you never know, it might come in handy, all right? So that's a good, I know a lot of people like to carry their compact firearms or their subcompact firearms. It's usually like with Glocks. They'll carry like a uh, Glock, 26 or something like that and they'll have a Glock 17 magazine in it and yeah, it'll work But yet at the same time the magazine's gonna be moving around There's gonna be a higher chance of possible failure due to the magazine now a higher chance not not likely But there's gonna be a slightly higher chance Whereas if you just put a full-size magazine and a full-size pistol it'll work better. All right, so that, that's just not one I'm throwing out there So that's another benefit with carrying a full-size service pistol. So for most part I covered the negatives in my last video, but I'll just reiterate them a little bit So yes carrying a full-size service pistol is a little bit harder to conceal All right, it's not a huge big difference to conceal it can be done. I've been doing it for years It's just a little bit harder to conceal. All right, it's a little bit more weight on your belt The the length of the pistol grip makes it stick out of your shirt just a little bit more all right, so it's a little bit harder to conceal. And now, specifically for that, I'm actually, uh, I'm carrying my M&P like I normally do. I was actually wearing a button-up on this, I wore this shirt today, but I specifically took that off just so I could show, the, show you this real quick. All right, so I'm carrying my full-size pistol, all right? You notice something? Tighter shirt, you move, you're gonna be seeing it, all right? And it's gonna catch up on the shirt, all right? You're reaching up for stuff, it's gonna stick out and it'll get caught in that all the time. So, yes, carrying a full-size pistol is a little bit harder to conceal because that little bit of extra inch of the pistol grip is going to make it a little bit more complicated to conceal and it'll stand out a little bit more. Once again, though, guys, you know, 90% of people, 99% of people aren't looking for someone that's carrying a gun. When they see a bump on your shirt, most of the time they won't even see a bump on the shirt because they'll either too be, be too busy on their phones or in their own head. But if they see a bump on a waistband or something like that, the first thing that comes to their mind is a phone or something like that, you know what I mean? Or a pager, if those are even popular still anymore. So so don't even worry about it, guys. Most time people won't notice. But if you're at a store and say you're bending over or something like that, then yeah, it's gonna stand out, all right? It's gonna stand out a lot, all right? So they are a little bit harder to conceal. Some people will actually say that a heavier pistol, full-size pistol is harder to handle. It's like, you know, I don't have your hands or whatever it is, but for most part, like M&Ps and stuff like that, they have the pistol grip system where you can actually swap out the pistol grips and make it a smaller grip or a medium grip or a large grip. Like me, I like the small grip just because I like a thinner pistol grip, all right? Now, I don't need a smaller grip, but I like it, all right? And I feel like it conceals just a little bit better. So, yes, I can see where you're coming from when it comes to that, but when you actually take the weight of the length, the weight of the pistol, and you put that into play, it is going to be easier to fire the caliber that you're choosing, all right? So a subcompact, if anyone's fired a subcompact, it is very, very snappy. Even a small little caliber, it's very snappy because it's such a small pistol, all right? A compact is a little snappier, but it's not as bad. It's not that much different than a full size. Whereas a full size or an extended side, it re it definitely reduces the recoil a little bit better and makes the pistol a little bit easier to handle, guys. All right, so I just wanted to cover that real quick. Now, you know, next to that, guys, I honestly don't think there, I, I don't see any other bad 
or disadvantages of carrying a full-size pistol. I just don't. I mean, in the military, you know, we carry a pistol. It's just a backup, all right? It's a sidearm, all right? It's something you use as last resort. It's not something, you know, we clear buildings with rifles, all right? We don't clear buildings with our 9 millimeters or whatever they're carrying at the time. Military is 9 millimeter NATO. But a pistol to us is always last resort. It's a backup caliber, not something that you're going to go to for from the get-go, all right? So when it comes to that guys when in the military when we do carry a pistol what we usually carry is a full-size service pistol specifically for those same reasons that i just covered all right it's a little heavier which means it reduces recoil a little bit more all right it's got a longer sight picture sight radius so it's going to be a little bit more accurate all right you can have more rounds in the magazine all right because it's usually a full-length magazine all right and most new shooters, it's easier for them to learn on a full-size pistol than it is on a compact or subcompact sub pistol, all right? In the military, we just, believe it or not, we just don't train that much with a pistol. We just didn't. I mean, like I said, for us as a backup, we knew how to draw, we knew how to shoot, the basics of it. But the only people that ever had to qualify with it were people that were specifically issued that pistol, like uh, officers, specific officers, uh, corpsmen. Those are the Navy corpsmen, the medics, uh, what you call in the Army. Um machine gunners um they usually have to have a pistol when they have a freaking 40 pound you know belt fed machine gun they need some backup especially if it's locked into a tripod all right they need a backup in case something comes close or snipers guys i mean for snipers their primary weapon is either their bolt action or their semi-automatic precision rifle all right but they all have a pistol you know most of the time, the pistol never gets used, but it's good to have in case someone comes up on them. It's something they can go to real quickly, and they can engage the enemy. Don't know me wrong. They usually go out in teams, but it's there in case something bad does happen, all right? So in the military, the only people that ever really carry a pistol are... Now, people that have specific tasks or specific jobs or specific billets, all right? Now, when you get to special operations and forces like that, you know, it's different. They, yeah, they all usually carry a pistol. But <laughs> I'll throw this out there because I see this all the time, and it actually, I think it's kind of crazy. People judge different special forces by the pistols they carry. <laughs> really? Well, so the SEALs are better because they carry the SIGs p 226 I think they went over to Glock now or whatever. You know, oh, Delta's better because they can carry whatever they want. It's like... You're forgetting the big thing, guys. It's like, no, no, that's what they're, they're issued, what they have available to them in the armory, all right? But what they carry is their personal choice, all right? <laughs> a lot of them, believe it or not, there's a lot of people to today that in special operations that would still rather carry a 1911, all right? There are people that would rather have that. They like that big 45 caliber slug, all right? So, you know, they like having that slug they like having that extra power and they'd rather go with a 1911 system all right some would go with a glock you know it's all personal preference especially in the oper special operations teams so guys please stop arguing about that you can't judge a special forces uh group by the pistols they carry when they, it's something they rarely ever use all right they all have different jobs all right they all have different purposes they all specialize in specific things so i <laughs> just want to throw that out there i just think it's it's almost comical when i see it all the time there you have it guys so those are the pros and cons of carrying a service pistol or a full-size pistol some people if you're like me you just prefer a full-size service pistols for those reasons and for personal preference all right you just prefer carrying a full-size pistol um some people don't you know it's up to you it's all personal preference like i said so and i answer a few other questions too or uh, you know addressed a few annoying questions that come up all the time it's really driving me crazy oh but anyway there you have it guys so if you like this video guys like share subscribe tell your friends about me and remember, guys, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.